Who is the Antichrist? What is his role in Israel's future? Are you curious about end-time prophecies? So let's dive into the video to know. The Antichrist in the Bible is described with various titles, like the Man of Sin and the Lawless One. He will become a global ruler and everyone will be under his control. People won't be able to function independently. According to the Bible's Book of Revelation, an Antichrist emerged from the European coalition. At the beginning of his rise to power, he took control of three nations. Then, using that as a base, he extended his dominion over the European coalition and, ultimately, the entire world. To exert his control over the world, the Antichrist uses a strategy involving what's known as the Mark of the Beast. This mark is essentially a license that regulates many aspects of life, particularly the economy. To qualify for this license, people are required to worship the Beast, who is the Antichrist. This worship of the Beast, as described in the Bible, leads to the concept of the Mark of the Beast. Through this strategy, he gains power over the entire world. A significant thing the Antichrist does is to make a covenant with Israel at the start of his career. In this agreement, he promises to safeguard Israel from its Arabic adversaries. Israel, in response, disarms and focuses on rebuilding its economy, enjoying a period of peace. However, as foretold in the Bible, the Antichrist, after three and a half years, breaks this covenant. He invades Israel, violates their temple, and destroys it. When he initially made the covenant, he allowed Israel to continue its worship. But this changed at the three-and-a-half-year mark when he forbade their worship. He goes to such extreme lengths that he enters the Jewish temple, removes all the furnishings, and sets up an idol of himself in the Holy of Holies. The Bible terms this event as the abomination of desolation. The Antichrist commands the entire world to bow down and worship this image. The persecution that the Antichrist instigates is multifaceted. It goes beyond overt acts of persecution. Your access to food and resources diminishes when you can't buy or sell. Many people in this period are likely to die from starvation because they won't be able to participate in the world's economy, thereby losing access to food. The Antichrist, empowered by Satan, becomes one of the cruelest leaders. Satan, who now controls the world, uses the Antichrist to exercise dominion over the entire planet. Unholy Trinity. Just as God has a trinity, Satan has an unholy trinity. In this unholy trinity, Satan corresponds to God the Father, the Antichrist to God the Son, and the false prophet to God the Holy Spirit. They are empowered by Satan, and their purpose is to engage in extreme evil. Now what unfolds next in these end-time events? As the Antichrist assumes control, he marches against Israel to wipe them off the face of the earth, echoing the former president of Iran's ominous statements. These terrifying plans come to fruition. As he advances toward Israel, other armies unexpectedly approach from various directions. They come from the north-south, and the eastern army crosses the Euphrates River. The Antichrist must pause to address this new development. Ultimately, all these armies converge, unaware of a common opponent, which they discover when Jesus Christ returns. Four powerful leaders, the beasts. In the end, four powerful leaders will come onto the world stage with two main goals. The first goal is to conquer the world and become global rulers. This means they'll take away our freedoms and civil liberties, and we might end up as state subjects. They won't allow us to enjoy our rights. Their second goal was to conquer Israel and harm the Jewish people. They want control of Jerusalem, preparing the way for a fake Messiah. Right now, many nations around Israel are hostile toward them. Anti-Semitism is on the rise, even among university young people, leading to violence and destruction. This big prophecy is playing out in the news every day. The Gog-Magog War, as mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 39, is said to be the start of a series of wars that some might call World War III, but the Bible calls Armageddon. It's pretty clear that our world is heading towards a major crisis. Revelation 13 talks about a beast rising from the sea. In prophecy, the sea symbolizes the nations of the world. This is a glimpse into a future predicted over 2,000 years ago and is now unfolding in our lifetimes. The four powerful leaders mentioned in Revelation are taking center stage for the first time. The King of the North is linked to Russia. Although it doesn't directly say Russia in the Bible, the description matches. Vladimir Putin is working on expanding the Russian Empire and they've started by strengthening their military presence. 
The King of the South represents Egypt and the Arab Islamic forces. All the directions mentioned in the Bible are based on Jerusalem as the center of the world. So when the Bible talks about Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, it refers to Arab Islamic nations. The King of the East is China, a military superpower that doesn't fear or respect the U.S. The Bible's term for East indicates China. According to Revelation, this king will lead a huge army of over 200 million soldiers. The King of the West includes America and the United Kingdom. The Antichrist will lead this group and make everyone accept a mark on their hand or forehead. Those who refuse will face severe consequences. Their main target is Israel. The Antichrist will establish his image in Jerusalem and declare himself a god. He'll demand the world to worship him, and his false prophet will perform impressive acts like calling down fire from the sky, trying to replicate what the prophet Elijah did on Mount Carmel. These powerful leaders are currently trying to gain global influence. Eventually, they will face the King of Kings and Lord of Lords in all his glory. Battle of Armageddon This battle that will happen is what we commonly refer to as the Battle of Armageddon. It is said to occur in Israel, and the battlefield is described as extraordinary. The Antichrist leads the armies of the world against Jesus Christ. When Jesus returns, he is accompanied by his holy ones and all the angels. He deals with the rebellious forces with a mere breath, resulting in their utter destruction. This destruction is so significant that it necessitates God summoning the birds of the air from around the earth to clean up the carnage left behind. The events at Armageddon are often associated with what is referred to as the Apocalypse, a term commonly used to describe the end times, the moment of great revelation. When all these significant events unfold, it leads to a moment of great revelation, and that's when Jesus Christ is fully revealed to everyone. This moment is the real apocalypse, and the revelation is about Christ, not destruction. So when Jesus comes, he destroys the Antichrist, dismantles all their armies, and the whole coalition falls apart. All those who rebelled against the Lord are destroyed, leaving only those who believed in Christ. It's the faithful followers who remain. After this big cleanup, Jesus Christ established his kingdom on earth, the millennium. This name is pretty straightforward, made up of mil, meaning a thousand, and anam, meaning years, signifying a thousand years of Christ's rule on earth. Even better, it's like a restored Eden where everything lost after the fall is returned. But there's more to this story. After this glorious millennium, the Bible reveals a final judgment. It's when Jesus Christ, the judge, will oversee the process. There are several judgments in the Bible, but the one you mentioned is the Great White Throne Judgment. The Great White Throne Judgment gathers all unbelievers throughout history for scrutiny. Books containing their deeds, words, and conscience are opened. The Lamb's Book of Life is the most vital. Those not listed face eternal suffering in the lake of fire due to their rejection of Christ. End of Satan. Now let's talk about Satan. After the Battle of Armageddon, the false prophet and the beast end up in Hades. Satan, however, is still around, but bound. He won't be cast into the lake of fire right away. At the end of the millennium, Satan joins his two companions in the lake of fire. They spend a thousand years in hell before anyone else. The first inhabitants of hell are Satan, the false prophet, and the beast. After the millennium, those who rejected Christ and followed Satan's ways, even taking the mark of the beast, will also be cast into the lake of fire. That's when Satan and his followers face eternal punishment. But here's the good part. After all this, the Bible says that the kingdom of the Lord will be delivered to the Father. The whole world will be in the hands of God, and it will be a place of everlasting peace and joy. This is referred to as heaven. God has a plan, and it's all laid out in the scriptures. Even in the darkest moments, there's a ray of hope and mercy. God never leaves us without a witness, and he shows his love and compassion, even in tough times. If you want to ensure you reach heaven, receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior and substitute is important. He offers the gift of eternal life. Remember, God desires you to be with him in heaven, and he's done everything he can to make it possible. So don't wait. After you pass away, it'll be too late. As it said, it is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. Comment below your views and subscribe for more.